Well, it's been about a month since I posted my last video, and at the end of that last video, I said that my review of the Omnipod 5 was hopefully coming soon. Um, for the, like, tens of you that eagerly follow this channel, uh, sorry it's taken so long. At the end of that video, I mentioned that I had the pause and I was just waiting for the intro kit. That, unfortunately, is still the case, and I thought that I would just share my nightmare story real quick. So about two months ago, I remember getting a proof for the upgrade to Omnipod 5 and I got a shipment from my pharmacy and it was just a box full of the, the pods themselves, the Omnipod 5 pods. And you know, it, it hit me that I my phone was not on the proof phone list, which is you know a very limited list, especially at launch. And you know, I remember hearing that I was supposed to have just like a budget phone that was supposed to ship with those that first uh, shipment of pods and it, it was basically just a replacement pdm um, but i was going to you know be a full-fledged android phone and run this omnipod 5 software i didn't get that so it was a sunday and i remember calling up their support team and saying hey you know i thought i was supposed to get this i didn't and they were like oh yeah that's weird you should have got like an intro kit with it and they were like you know the team that actually handles that is is not open on the weekends but give them a call back on monday and they you know asked me a couple more questions and they're like you know maybe actually touch base with your your pharmacy first because it, it seems like your pharmacy was supposed to fill you know, they call it the intro kit. I, I thought that was just, you know, a phone that I was supposed to get with it, but it's actually a full on uh, intro kit. So the next day I log on to CVS Caremark's website and I see that, you know, the Omnipod 5 intro kit is a separate prescription. And I also see that they weren't able to fulfill it. There's no details. I just see next to the prescription, hey, we're not able to fulfill this. And so I call up their customer service and I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? Why weren't you guys able to fill this? And she you know, does, does a little crunching and she's like, I actually don't know why we weren't able to. Do you want to maybe just have your doctor send it in again? And so I, I did and I called up my doctor. I said, hey, you know, my pharmacy is saying just resubmit this and, and they did. Um, and then a couple of days later, I get the notification that, hey, we're not able to fulfill this prescription. And again, there's no details as to why they weren't. And so, you know, I was like, maybe it's just because it's an online pharmacy, a mail order pharmacy. Um, so I was like, I'll just have my doctor submit a, the prescription to my local Walmart. And a couple days go by, and usually Walmart will just shoot me a text when I have a prescription ready. And, you know, they didn't. And I actually thought that it was my doctor that forgot to submit the prescription. Uh, so I called him up and she's like, no, nope, I submitted that prescription. Uh, you might, well, might as well call Walmart. And so I did. And Walmart's like, yeah, you know, let me, it, it just looks like we don't have any in stock. Let me see when there's going to be some in stock. And so she called her supplier and she was like, you know, our, our supplier doesn't have any, but they're expected to get some next week. And so it kind of just hit me, you know, it's probably the same reason that CVS Caremark couldn't uh, fulfill it. It's just all the suppliers are, there's just a shortage of it because the demand is so strong. So anyways, I just wait till the next week and then Walmart shoots me a text. Hey, you know, your prescription's ready, but the amount was $650. Or something like that. It was something really close to six hundred fifty, and I was just you know taken back. I I was told that it was going to be a free upgrade. That I could start with Dash, and there'd just be a free upgrade to Omnipod Five. And so, and if you've watched my first video about when I was initially was switching to Omnipod, uh, which if you haven't, I'll link up here. Um, you know that this is not the first time that they've told me that something would be free and it wasn't. But the first time it was like $120 for a three month supply and this one was $650. And like that is just a lot of money for something that I honestly just doesn't even feel like it is necessary. Like I already carry a smartphone on me, like more than capable of running this exact app on it. And why should I need to carry a separate device that's just running one app? It seems so unnecessary. And side note here, even if you do own a device that's on their approved list, they still are making you just do your initial setup using that intro kit. 
which again is it, just completely unnecessary and the reason they're doing it is just because they want to make money off of selling these intro kits and you know maybe i'm just speculating here if if you are actually on the omnipod 5 and you know of a reason why the initial setup has to be done through uh through the intro kit you know please comment that down below but i i think that they're just thinking hey you know this is something actually that we can build insurance for which honestly if that is the case that's just so wasteful like why make people even if it is insurance covering at 100 percent why why add that increased cost to insurance um and also why put all the excess waste into the ecosystem like if it's a, just a device that's going to just sit in a closet and probably just end up in the trash eventually like never get used why would you do that huge credit goes to like dexcom in this regard is that they realized when they rolled out the g6 that hey you know maybe we shouldn't make people buy the receiver because most people are just going to be using the smartphone app and so they allowed just the initial setup and everything to just go through the smartphone app and that was something that i really wish that omnipod would have done here and then just another little side rant about the phones on the approved phone list like I know that Omnipod has a very close relationship with Samsung, and so it absolutely makes sense that the first devices approved are Samsung devices. But if you actually look at that list, like I know Samsung's happy about the phones on this list. The uh, the absolute newest phones on this list are, are the S twenty one series, you know, S twenty one, S twenty one plus, S twenty one Ultra, which at this point are eighteen months old, maybe even older. Which, I guess, at least on T-Mobile, you can still technically buy an S21 Plus if you really want to. It makes pretty much zero sense to do that with the S22 out and, and the deals that they've run. But if you really want to, you can. And the Galaxy S9 is on this approved list. Like, the Samsung really want people that are on a Galaxy S9 and thinking about maybe upgrading their an S22. And then being like, oh wait, if I do that, then uh, this Omnipod 5 app isn't going to work. Like... You know, if, if I was a Samsung in charge of partnerships, like, I wouldn't be happy about this. And, you know, me personally, uh, my beloved OnePlus 8 that I've had for a couple years now, uh, it got slammed in a car door. It completely shattered. Um, and I did upgrade to a Galaxy Z Fold, which is like their one of their newest, latest and greatest phones. And it's a little frustrating that this isn't on their proof phone list. Maybe it will be shortly. I don't know. There's no time frame of when they're going to update that list or, or roll out any updates or anything. Anyways, side rants aside, so I call up Omnipod customer service and I get a message, you know, your wait time is expected to be longer than 45 minutes. And I was like, whatever, I'll just put it on hold. I'll continue working. You know, I'm calling at work. And I, I legit like wait on hold for over two hours and nobody answers. I So they, they give me an option to leave a voicemail. I leave a voicemail, I give it a couple days, I don't hear it back. Okay, so I call again and I wait on hold for like three hours this time. And again, nobody picks up. And the next day I call again and again, wait on hold for like two hours and nobody picks up. So clearly I'm not the only one who's having problems with this. Uh, and that's really frustrating. And it's really frustrating that you know, they're, they're seeing how long these people are waiting on hold and they're just not devoting enough resources to helping these people. I never get my messages returned. Um, I, my sales rep, Michael, um, I shot him an email. I was like, Hey, I know this isn't really your thing, but you know, can you forward me on to someone who can help me? And I didn't hear anything. Uh, and it's just been a really frustrating process. I finally, at some point, like two days ago, did get an email and they're saying, hey, you know, we're kind of working with insurances on this. But again, no update as far as timing or anything. And it's just, this whole process has just been a nightmare. But if you are someone who's in a similar situation as me, there at least is a little bit of hope. There's, there's kind of three avenues that can happen. Number one is that hopefully Omnipod will be able to work things out with insurance. And we'll be able to uh, get these intro kits. At, at least insurance will cover the majority of it. Um, hopefully it will be free to us. Uh, it would be the best case. In Avenue 2, you know, hopefully someone's able to do a build your own Omnipod 5 app. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, you know, Dexcom G6 also 
it's only available on a select number of devices and every phone that I've owned I'm pretty sure has not been on that uh, list of devices. Um, I've been able to circumvent it by using what's called the Build Your Own Dexcom app. And basically just this guy, he lets you build your own version of the Dexcom app and you can do little tweaks as far as like notification and more time and stuff like that. But the big thing that it does is if you're using the app on a non-approved device, by default it's going to just come up with a blank screen that says, you know, you're not using an approved device, you can't use this app. If you do the build your own Dexcom app, you can skip that screen and hopefully something like that will come to the Omnipod 5. Hopefully on this hypothetical Omnipod 5 app, uh, there will be a checkbox to skip initial setup with the PDM. Otherwise, we're still entirely re reliant on Avenue 1 working out. And then Avenue 3 is um, hopefully Android APS just gets updated to work with Omnipod 5. And they're still, still able to make it so that the pod will integrate with the Dexcom. That honestly would be my best case scenario because I have loved Android APS, which if you don't know what Android APS is, I've done like a million videos on it. Just go, <laughs> go check it out. Um, but one of the big downsides to Android APS is that my phone is constantly doing work in the background and it is a big drain on battery life. And also if, uh, if my phone dies or is out of range, well, it's in my basketball bag or something, then my loop just isn't working anymore, right? Like my phone isn't communicating with my Omnipod telling it what my blood sugar is. And so my Omnipod is just reverting back to the default basal. If Omnipod 5 could make it so that the uh, Dexcom communicates directly with the pod itself, that would be awesome. It means that you would only need to use the app to just declare meal boluses, right? So the drain on the battery is gone because all that's happening on the pod and it doesn't matter if the phone's out of range or dead, you know, you're still getting those correction uh, boluses and adjusted basals if you're going high or if you're going low. So honestly, if I could only pick one, I would absolutely pick that way. Um, but I'm not able to see any update on that as far as any Android APS pages or anything like that, but hopefully that's something in the work. So yeah, those have just been a couple of my quick thoughts. Um, maybe not so quick, uh, but yeah, just hopefully I'm not the only one that's being driven insane by this. If you've had a similar experience, please comment that down below. Um, I sure hope that this gets better. I really do because I think that the product itself has so much potential. Um, anyways, please subscribe. Uh, if you aren't subscribed already and hit that like button and we'll see you in the next one.